want to go ahead. I want to take you back just a quick moment, if you please, to the Day of Atonement. There was a section in it that um, someone had uh, sent me some information because they wanted to get more understanding. If we can go back to the book of Joel chapter 2, the book of Joel chapter 2, I want you to uh, observe, you will begin reading, I know you are cleaning your, your lenses to your, uh, I can't put those things in my eyes, I don't want to mess me up real good, so I don't have glasses on, so you're brave, okay, so Joel chapter 2, I want to begin reading at verse 11. Now, because the question was asked, how can it be that, that babies or children, they go on the fast? How, how can that be? Well, there's a reason why babies go on the fast. And there's a reason why even your, your livestock, if you're a farmer, if you have cows and horses, they go on the fast as well. My wife went out there to put uh, feed for the dog. I said, no, <laughs> no, no feed, no water for the dog. The dog is going to be fasting just like we are. But is he going to go to the whole, the whole thing? The whole thing. So he's sniffing around trying to wonder, what's going on here? You know? About this time, I don't have my feed. He didn't get no feed, no water until we had feed and water. So, as we will read in the book of Joel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 11, if you'll read for me, please, officer. The book of Joel, chapter 2, and verse 11. And the Most High shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. Read. For he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Read. Who can abide it? So when he returns with his troops, with his hosts, it will be a dreadful time. I know that you, over the last few months you've been hearing me recite this over, but I'm trying to get your mind conditioned to the fact that when Yahweh returns, uh, or when Yahweh Shai returns, it is going to be a dreadful time. It's going to be so bad, it's going to throw the whole world into a frenzy. There will be panic everywhere. But let's read on. Verse 12. Therefore, also now, saith the Most High, turn ye even to me with all your heart, Read. and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. So fasting must be accompanied with weeping and mourning. Sure. One, one, one would say, well, why do you need to do that? Because the scripture lets us know a broken and a contrite heart, Yahweh will not despise. You have to become broken before him. If, and that's why when you go before him, you're not going, you see, if you're doing it because you're trying to lose some weight, you've lost the purpose of it. The, the, the spiritual, supernatural blessing behind it has diminished. But you go before him because there's a lack in your mind. There's a need in your mind. He will now raise the standard to bring you into the blessing that is before you. But let's read. And render your heart, and not your garments and turn unto the Most High your power. Now why it says that is because remember, render your heart, remember your mind. Remember the heart refers to the mind. Render it before him, not your garment, not the, the nice jackets and clothes and shirts and everything else that you wear. Remember Esther's, uh, Queen Esther, she took off all of her things. She tore her hair out. She even went so far to put dung in her hair. Right. Now, can you imagine the state of a queen looking like that? But she wanted to, to make herself decrease that the spirit of the Most High in her would increase. And that's what happened. And that's why Israel has a, um, has a history because of this queen who humbled herself to do the will of the Most High God. Read, sir. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, 
and of great kindness, Read. and repented him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord, Read. Lord your Yahweh. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Read. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. See, so the people must be gathered and sanctified, separated, according to Deuteronomy chapter 1 and 39. Read. Assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast. See that? Gather the children and those that suck the breast. That's right. So it's letting you know clearly here, it's not just children, but it is also babies. Now we say that any babies that's in their months of age, they should not do that. That's, that's what I would advise you. But those who have reached like a full term of one year or two years, remember, babies are resilient. There has been landslides, there have been buildings tumbled down, and whilst the adults have died, the babies have lived for days after. Right. So there is a there is a spirit in us to live. The body it doesn't die easily. That's why even when it is shot or stabbed or goes through a car crash or some traumatic uh, end, the, the body is still fighting to live. Even though the injuries is trying to take it into death. We'll finish that for me, please. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Very good. Now let's go to Luke chapter, uh, no, go to Deuteronomy 1 and 39. Let's go there. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and 39. This is just um, going over some scriptures for the, the requests that were made by a few individuals. We want to make sure that we. Answer your question before you go into the lesson. Let me take a minute or two. Let's go there. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 39. Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil. See that? Now, why is that so important? Listen. Some of our children, they have in the life previously that they lived, and they come back into this life, sometimes the Most High has pronounced judgment on them. But by your actions, by the, by the uh, preparation of the parent, you are steering them that the Most High God will have mercy on them. Now we did that with our children. We let our children and our oldest um, one is 30 years of age, and, uh, and the daughter is 25. Now, I, I share this to let you know that if I can do it, you can do it. So you young ones who have children coming up, and those of you that are yet to be, remember, you can do this. Because we're steering the next generation in the right direction. Because we're now in truth. Read, sir. Come. They shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. They shall possess it. Let's go to Luke chapter 1 and 39. Let's read the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 39. And Mary arose in those days, and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. Read. And entered into it. The house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. Read. And it was selected. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the, the situation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. So when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb because the baby was witnessing what was there. Now, the woman said, But well, how could the baby do that? Well, and remember, even though the baby is not yet born, the spirit of the baby is, is still conscious, still aware, still knowing. Have you noticed, in fact, again, something my wife and we just talked about the other day, sometimes, have you ever wondered why babies cry so much? 
They come back, well, you got me back here again. I thought I escaped all of this. Crying their eyes out. And then you see some baby, you look at them in front of them, and they're looking at you like, yeah, right, right. <laughs> because, and, and, the, and the truth is, their spirit don't want to be here again because it's been through too much before when it was already here and now it's come back again. That's why you, you can't treat babies lightly. And in Christianity, you were taught all that mess. Now in the truth, we're, we're, we're taught to be able to be more functional, or more conscious of, of the fact that this is a true soul, a true spirit at work here. And so what we do helps to guide that child through its formative life to come. Let's read on. If I read it again. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 1 and verse 39 of verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Was what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. The Spirit um, ascended on her and, or, and caused her to, to, to have a new... It's like... Um, let's see if I can give a, 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 a brief, rough example. It's like a feeling of euphoria well-being and so the spirit came on her filled her and read verse 42 and we'll just part of it and then we'll start verse 42 and she spake out with a loud voice and said blessed art thou among women stop there right. let's go from there to, to john 9 and 1. let's read john chapter 9 and verse 1 as yahweh shot Passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? Now, the reason why I was brought this up because for those of you that are struggling with the fact that, well, how could you come? You know, you're talking about the baby having been here previously. Well, read it again and read it slower this time. Watch. John chapter 9 and verse 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? So uh, they were asked the question about this blind man. And it opens up in verse 1 of the reading. And, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. So he was born blind. Now, any ailments such as blindness or any um, uh, physical ailment on the body is a sign of judgment that is placed on the child in this life for things done in previous life. Whatsoever disorder you're dealing with, in this life is a judgment on you for previous actions in previous life. That's why, as the officer just read in verse 2, he said, and his disciples asked him, Master, free, who did sin? Who did sin? Now, how are you asking about him sinning? A, he's blind, so what's he going to do? B, he's, he's a young man, that means he's blind. But what does a blind man run around and go and sin and do? So therefore, it goes back to the question that this came about at birth. And it was asked, did he sin or? Or his parents. Or his parents, read. That he was born blind. See, that he was born blind. Now, when we read on, watch what Yahweh said, because that reason why this is important, and we skip over it so sometimes, and we shouldn't, is because to let you know, because sometimes they don't start examining in our own father and say, well, that must be what's happening to this person, or what's happening to, to my son, or my brother, or, or, or my, my father, my No. 
Because sometimes some things are put on you for a reason other than judgment. Come. Come. Uh, now read, sir. Verse That's what three. It says. Verse three. Yahweh Shai answered, Neither hath this man See, said, Neither. Letting you know that this is not a judgment on him because of previous life sin, but Yahweh, our father, Abba, he chose him to use him as a demonstration for others who were going to be um, uh, uh, pa a parallel to bringing this gospel to the world that they should see this and use him as an example for that. So sometimes you're used as an example. Sometimes you're used to help those around you get straight. So now he said, read it again for me, please, sir. Yeah, how much I answer? Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents. Read. But that the works of Yahweh should be made manifest in him. Read. I must work the works of him. So and this is a work that must be done. I must work the work. So this happened so that I would come and work the work. Right. What's the work? Read. That sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. The night he's speaking about is not the literal night. He's saying that there's going to be such a cataclysmic extirpation in the future that it's going to bring the world to a standstill. That's the night he's speaking about. The Bible also um, calls it, in the book of James, uh, or Jude, calls it a second death. The second death is speaking about. Read. As Salaki. Work the works, I must work. Verse 14. Yes, sir. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. Read. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So he is the light of the world. Light also means knowledge. Darkness means ignorance. Darkness means disaster. So now he's the light, the knowledge, the deliverer. And in, in, and in this case, a strong deliverer. So let's go, let's drop that. Let's go to um, Exodus chapter 20 and 4, and then we'll get straight into the teaching. Go ahead. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, Read. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, Read. or that is in the earth beneath, Read. or that is in the water under the earth. Read. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, thy Yahweh, am a jealous power, Read. visiting the iniquity of the fathers. So, so you see that? So the iniquity or the actions, the demonstrations of sin of the fathers is visited where? Read. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. See, so sometimes what the child go through is from the father's actions. Wow, now you see, I'm going through this mess because of my dad. Yes, your parents. So he tells you clearly here that visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, read, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So those that hate you, the sins of your parents is now visiting you. Now that's a heavy pill to swallow. Make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, makes sense. Sense. All right. So, uh, let me see, let me see. Um, but let's read verse 6 and we'll close that one. Yes. Verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So the mercy is shown unto the thousands. It used the word thousands because at that time it did use the word millions. But let's say for the millions uh, of them that love him, Yahweh, and do what? And keep his commandments. So we must keep his 
commandment. You're never going to get away from that. You can duck, we do whatever you want. You're never going to get away from the fact that you have to keep his commandments. I know people are trying to make it sweet. Well, you know, what about this? What about it says that you love him and keep his commandments. Right. That's what it says. Come on. All right, let's get into this. All right. The title of this lesson today is King James Apocrypha. King James Apocrypha. Let's begin by going to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 5. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5. Let's read. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5. Every word of Yahweh is pure. Watch it. So it says, and notice there's a colon there. There's no need to think about it. It's a fact. That's what it is. Don't need to argue. Every word of Yahweh is pure. Read. He is a shield. He is a what? He is a shield. He is a what? He, he is, is a, a shield. shield. Read. Unto them that put their trust in Unto him. Unto them that put their trust in him. Yes, sir. Read. Add thou not unto his words. Don't add to his words. And you're going to see later how man over time has tried to add to his word. Read. Lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Thou be found a liar. Now what we're going to do, we're going to use a comparative uh, uh, direction today. When it comes down to the scriptures and the Bible and the Apocrypha, to see what the comparisons are. Now, there are, there are, and, and, and again, everyone knows this. Everyone knows what I'm about to say. So what, what I'm saying is not a revelation necessarily to, to, to this camp. But those who are scholarly in the scriptures, uh, when I say the scriptures, that includes the Apocrypha, because it was and still is a part of the Bible, as, it, as it's called. Do you know that even in the time of Yahweh Shai, the Apocrypha was so? Hmm. Interesting, right? Because then you're, you're questioning, well, what, what's it having to do with now? Well, it was around until his time. How did he know what he knew? Because he had, yes, he, he, yes, he's the son of God, so he can pull the information what I'm trying to show you is that he made reference to the writings of the scriptures just like everybody else did. So the, the point we're going to deal with, we're going to deal with the first point. Uh, please make a note of it, because it's a common point. Point number one. The claims that it teaches that you can earn your way into the kingdom. The claims that it that it teaches that you can earn your way into the kingdom by the giving of money. Because then you'll read and people say, Well, see, it says you've got to give money. That's not how it happened. Well, now you must understand. Those going back to the to the to the eleventh or even the seventh no the eleventh century they use this in order to collect as much arms as they could so that they could build some of the, the churches that they now have. There there are cathedrals throughout this world, especially in France and Italy. There's a particular one in Switzerland, which is one of the, they say it's one of the oldest churches in Europe. And when you see these particular edifices, you know some money had to go into those things to build them. And it didn't take months, it took years, meaning generations after generations had to come and give in order to build these structures. Let's go to the book of Tobit. 
chapter 4 and verse 10. Shall we? Chapter 4 and verse 10. Let's read. The book of Tobit, chapter 4 and verse 10. Because that alms do deliver from death and suffer not to come into darkness. Read that again. Because that alms do deliver from death and suffer not to come into darkness. And suffer not to come into darkness. All right, let's go and read uh, Tobit chapter 4 and 5. Tobit chapter 4 and verse 5. In fact, Absalaki, uh, jump to uh, chapter 12 and 9. Let's, let's get that alms in that way first. The book of Tobit, chapter 12 and verse 9. For alms doth deliver from death. See, so let's say, so alms doth, what doth mean, will deliver from death, read, and shall purge away all sin. And do what? Purge away all sin. And purge away all sins. Read. Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. So shall be filled with life. Now to read that immediately, you should say, well, I believe that if I give money, I'm not. I'm getting into the kingdom. No, it doesn't. That's not what its purpose is for. We'll explain it in a moment. But, again, I want you to understand, this is how the Roman Catholic Church and many of those, those Protestant churches used it to their advantage. So, but when they saw, <clears throat> I'm speaking about the Protestants now, when they saw that this was now going to reveal um, uh, a certain entity of people, they chose now to get rid of them. But it's, it's what they use for centuries. That's why you have bishops who, uh, uh, bishops and special cardinals who live in what they call palaces. Because they had what's known as, if you were a bishop of a church, you had to live in a palace. And that's why we have churches over in the UK where we have um, a Canter Canterbury Cathedral. And all of these little, and then just a few uh, miles down the road, there is the bishop's uh, palace. So it was made to make these people prominent and rich. Now let's go back to Tobit. Let's begin reading uh, Tobit chapter 4 and begin at 5 again. Let's break it down slowly. The book of Tobit, chapter 4 and verse 5. All right. My son, be merciful. Merciful, so I be mindful of the Lord, or your help. Now you see what, what he's doing. He's now administering to his son. So he begins by saying, my son, be mindful of Yahweh, our God, all thy days, read, and let not thy will be set to sin. Don't eat. Put your mind on sin, read, or to transgress his commandments, or to transgress his commandments, read, do uprightly all thy life long, so long, and follow not the ways of unrighteousness. See, so this is a father encouraging his son to live a righteous life. Read on. For if thou deal truly, thy doing shall prosper thee. Uh, succeed to thee. Read. And to all them that live justly. Read. Give alms of thy substance. Give alms of your substance. When you have earned and you've made some money, don't be stingy. Give alms of your substance. Remember, we just read it earlier on where the scripture said, Do not withhold your tithe, because if you give your tithe, you will be blessed seven times over. Now, again, uh, there's a confusion here in the body because you'll find that some of us have a mixed view. What the scripture here is trying to teach us, because different camps have different philosophies on that. Now which, let's go by what the word says. Read that again, please. Tobit chapter 4, verse 7. Give alms of thy substance, and when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious. So don't be envious. Because some people give and they and they they, they give stingy because you know if I give I won't be able to do what I need to do and have what I need to have. 
Again, we've read in the scripture, it says, you give, and the Most High will bless you back seven times. Read. Neither turn thy face from any poor. From what? From any poor. Now, the reason why you mustn't turn your face from the poor, and by the way, it's not speaking about the poor as in everybody else. Once upon a time, I, I, it was my, I made it a thing that I wouldn't drive or go by anyone who was begging and I didn't give. It was something that I always did. When I came to understand the scriptures, it was not speaking about giving to every Tom, Dick, or Harry. It was uh, pointing me in the direction that I should never walk by any who is of Israel and forsake them. Because about Israel, because it, it is Israel who is disenfranchised. That's right. Now some of you say, oh that's a bit harsh. Uh, well, brother, sister, get over yourself because we have to look after our own because nobody else is. That's right. But let's read, I'll read it again, read it again. Yes, sir. Give all of thy substance. And when thou givest alms, let not thine eyes be envious, neither turn thy face from any poor. Read now. And the face of Yahweh shall not be turned away from thee. If thou hast abundance, give alms accordingly. If thou have but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little. So you give what you can based upon what you have. You don't try to compete with someone who has much to, that give one of you as much. No, no, no. Give what you can. They'll give what they can because they're in a different category. Tom? Tom. Tom. All right. Stay with me now, ladies and gentlemen. Read. For thou list of a good treasure. Now. Now it's letting you know that when you do this, you are laying up a good treasure. Now it's going to make it even more clear. Read. For thyself. For who? For thyself. So, for those of you that have a problem giving financially, it is telling you that you're laying up treasures for yourself. You don't know at what point in your life you're going to need. Let me just let that kind of marinate in your mind for a moment. You don't know down the road where you're going to find yourself absolutely lacking. So when you give, you are setting yourself up so that in that future when there is nothing or you don't have, he will provide for you because he remembers what you did. There's nothing greater than that. Especially when you're, you're in need and, and all of a sudden out of nowhere it comes. By the way, this I learned from my mother. Right. Because she used to read topic to us when we were two. Mm -hmm. Let's read, sir. Read. Against the day of necessity. Day of necessity. I remember when we were young and, and, and they would come and cut the lights off. And six children, she's a widow. Nobody that she could borrow money from. And guess what? Out of nowhere, Sister so and so was on the bus going by and said that uh, something came into her mind to get off the bus and come by five Stuart Road Thorns and leave sorry. And come in and put this in her hand. When when the woman, put, when the sister, and by the way, I'll, I'll tell her her name because she, she's gone home to glory now, but, but her name is Memorial, Sister Grace. And, and put the money in her hand. And when she opened up her hand, it was the same money that she needed to pay. And she would say to me, uh, uh, Terry, um, just run around to the to, to the to the the seaboard. It was called Seaboard, the gas company. Run around there and, and get them to, the, to connect everything. See, I lived through this, so I know what this is saying to be true. That I'm not just saying because somebody else testimony. I'm saying because I know, I know, I know that He will bless you. If you will trust him. Right. Our people don't trust because we've been we've been taught to be stingy, we've been taught to be suspicious. And sadly, some of our people have been so so 
So nefarious that we can't help but to be suspicious sometimes. But we've got to we've got to judge the spirit accordingly. I, I judge his brother according to his spirit, and he will judge me according to my spirit. We don't put him in the same category as everybody else because some people just aren't good out there. Come? Huh? Um. Well, let's read, read, sir. Watch it now. Because that alms do deliver from death. So that's why alms deliver from death. You see the context now? It delivers from death because, uh, let's, let's read it in context again. Go back up and, and read, sir. Yes, sir. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. Read. Because that alms do deliver from death. From death. Now you're seeing why it delivers from death because you have done good for your brethren. And the people who come and read this out of context and say, well, the Bible said, I read in your pocketbook where it says that uh, you can pay your way into the kingdom. But did you read the whole thing, bro? That's right. Where you pull one thing out, out of context, and then you want to come and land last everybody else with it. But when we read it in context, it now makes perfect sense. Read on. Read verse 10 again. Verse 10. Because that alms do deliver from death. Because of what you did for your brethren. Read. And suffer not to come into darkness. Read. For alms is a good gift. Well, I, 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 well hold it. Say that again. For alms is, is a, a good, good gift. gift. Read. Unto all that give it in the sight of the Most High. Hallelujah. Is that clear enough for you, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. <laughs> Let's go to Matthew chapter 6 and 3, please. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 3. Read when you have it. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 3. But when thou dost alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand do. Because some of us show off. We like to, we like to act braggadocious. We want people to see just this is how, that's why I see some people don't want, I will, uh, yes, that is okay, now I'm going to be careful how I say it because I, I know this goes all the way around, <laughs> all right, <clears throat> because I, I do one particular individual, we have envelopes, and we used to do it because we, uh, at the churches in the UK belong to the Charity Commission, in terms of they take accountability of certain things. So this brother, he wanted to, he didn't want an envelope, he wanted people to see, so he would, he would count the money and he'd just drop it in the thing, because it was his way of showing off. But what he didn't realize he was doing, he was making others who wanted to give feel embarrassed. Yeah, that's true. So then, 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 then you have to go and talk to the brother. And then guess what the brother man would do? Well, if you don't want my money, I'll go to your church. And guess what he did? Went up the road to another church. Yeah. We don't have people in church simply because we want money. That's right. People are in church because they are understanding and learning the way to make it into the kingdom. That the money you give is is this a small part of what you do. Come, on. Come on. I really want you to get this. But what is said? Read it again, sir. Six and three. Matthew chapter six and verse three. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Read. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So thine alms may be what? For thy alms may be in secret. May be in secret. Read. And thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Rewards you openly. Now let, let's go from there back to Tobit chapter 12 and verse 9. Tobit chapter 12 and verse 9. In the Apocrypha, Tobit chapter 12 and verse 9. For all doth deliver from death and shall purge away all sin. You do what? Purge away all sin. All right, now from here, um, yeah, finish it, finish, finish it, finish it. Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. See that? Those who exercise that. 
can be filled with life. Um, let's just go back to Matthew one more time. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 3. Let's read 19. Verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Read. Where moth and rust doth corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal. Read. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where? In heaven. Read. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There will your heart be also. Okay. So, we understand that. Now, when we read verse 20, one more time, if you please. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So you're laying up treasures in heaven. You are securing your future. The giving that you do secures your future. Because remember, the future to come, there's not even going to be any money. I hope you know this. <coughs> so then how are you going to get by? So there are other means that the, our Father has already secured for you that will supply your needs. If you think money is going to be around, you're sadly mistaken. Money is coming out real quick. That future of money is on the way out. And some, the scripture tells us, are going to take the mark. Whether it be in their foreheads or in their hands. And so there's not going to be any money around. And you're not going to take any marks. You're not going to take any chips. Then what are you going to do? How are you going to get by? So read 20 again, sir. Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures. You know this. It says lay up for yourselves. Uh. Not for Tom, Dick, or Harry. For yourself. Read. Treasures in heaven. Read. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. There it is. Thieves. Now you know there's no thieves. <laughs> so if there's no thieves, they like must be speaking about brown here now. There's thieves now. There's moths now. <clears throat> so you're protecting yourself from that. All right. The second point, the number two point is in your pocketbook. The Apocrypha teaches that money can be given as a sign, or sorry, uh, so lucky, given as a sin offering to the Most High. That money can be given as a sin offering to the Most High. Let's go to 2 Maccabees chapter 12 and 43. 2 Maccabees chapter 12. And verse 43. Please do highlight these scriptures. Read. In the Apocrypha, 2 Maccabees, chapter 12 and verse 43. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of 2,000 diamonds of silver, he sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering, doing therein very well and honestly in that he was mindful of the resurrection. For if he had not hoped that they, Salaki, that they that were slain should have risen again, it had been... All right, we'll stop there for a moment. We'll come back to it. Uh, read it again. Verse 44. Verse 43. Uh, Maccabees chapter 12. Second Maccabees chapter 12, verse 43. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of 2,000 diadems of silver, he sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering, doing therein very well and honestly, in that he was mindful of the resurrection. Now, let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 13 and verse 11. And 11. Exodus chapter 30 and 11. The book of Exodus 
chapter 30 and verse 11. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, watch it now. So, this that is speaking about is called atonement money. See that? Read verse 11 again, please. Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 11. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Most High, when thou number them, that there be no plague among them. That there be what? No plague among, among them. them. When thou numberest them. So you see then, this is um, a ransom or an atonement money for sin. So it's funny to me how you read in the Apocalypse where he collects money, but then you have no problem with it being in, in, in uh, Exodus chapter uh, chapter 13, verse, verse 12. Because what people often are doing, they're picking. You've never mentioned this before, but you read it in the Apocalypse, and it's all, oh, look what it's saying. Now, the, 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 the money side of it, in fact, um, Sister Cleo, since you're there, read it again, let me start back in the second Maccabees. Second Maccabees 43. Yes. 1243. Well, and and, I'll, and as well, soon as she she's finished that 43, I want you to read um, what we have there. Read that. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of 2,000 grams of silver, he sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering. Uh, what? A sin offering. All right, go, go ahead and read what you got there. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 11. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, when thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Most High. See, so it was a ransom for the same thing. Same thing. So why are we making it such a big deal here? Because someone's trying to nitpick. So let's go back. To, um, let, let's, let's read what you read where you are. Verse Say, well, I want you to jump down to verse 13. Verse 30? 13. 13. Exodus chapter 30 and verse 13. This they shall give everyone that passeth among them that are numbered, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. Read, sir. A shekel is 20 goras. A half shekel shall be the offering of the Most High. Every one that oh, jump to, uh, yeah, continue, continue. Though every one that passeth among them that are numbered from twenty years old and above shall give an offering unto the Most High. Read. The rich shall not give. Salaki. The rich shall not give more. So and the rich is not going to show up. They're going to give exactly the same as those who are not rich. Sure. Read. So everyone's on equal footing. Read. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel. Read. Then, Shalaki, when they give an offering unto the Most High to make an atonement for your souls. To, and to do what? To make an atonement for your soul. To do what? To, to make, make an atonement, atonement for, for your soul. soul. Read. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before the Most High to make an atonement for your soul. And the money here was used to maintain the temple. Yes. <laughs> it was used to keep things to keep the upkeep. So why is it that all of a sudden now, 
we have this view. It's because the scripture tells us in the last days you've got to watch out for scoffers. People will come to scoff. All right. Now, the third area um, of the Apocrypha, the Apocrypha promotes the idea of the practice of praying for the dead. Now, we just dealt with this just the other day. So let's go to the second map of this, chapter 12, verse 43. Read there. Second Maccabees, chapter 12, and verse 43. And when he had made a gathering throughout the company to the sum of 2,000 diadems of silver, he sent it to Jerusalem to offer a sin offering, doing what? Salaki, doing therein very well and honestly, and that he was mindful of the resurrection. Right. So the dragons of silver here, and then it's, it goes on to I'll also cover a little bit more when we read verse 44. Verse 44. For if he had not hoped that they were slain, should have risen again. Watch it. Watch it carefully now. Read. It had been. Oh, I'm sorry. Off the read again, please, sir. For if he had not hoped that they. Had that not hoped. Read. That they that were slain. That they which had been slain. Read. Should have risen should again. Should what? Have risen again. Should be risen again. So speaking about <coughs> the resurrection. Read. It had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. Mm -hmm. So it's telling us that the that the prayer would have been um, would have been vain for the dead. Right? right? right. Now, if we uh, I wonder if I can take it. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah. Read it again, please. Read 44 again. Yes, sir. Second Maccabees, chapter 12, and verse 44. If he had not hoped that they that were slain should have risen again, it had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. Read on. And also, in that he perceived that there was great favor laid up for those that died godly. It was in holy and good thought, whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead, that they might be delivered from sin. From sin. Let's go to Matthew 22 and verse 23. Matthew 22 and verse 23. Let's read. The book of Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 23. Read. The same, Salaki, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection. Because, and, because they didn't have full understanding. Read. And asked him, said, Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his brother, his wife. I stop there. Let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 4 and 13. Keep Matthew available because we're going to come back there and read it again. First Thessalonians chapter four and verse thirteen. The book of First Thessalonians chapter four and verse thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant. To be what? To be ignorant, read, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, read, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, read. For if we believe that Yahushai died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Yahawashai, will Yahweh bring with him. Let's go back and read Matthew chapter 22 and 23 again, please. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees, saying, Salaki would say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die, Having no children, his brother shall marry his wife. So, what we have here is a lack of understanding on the Sadducee side. You see that? Right. Everyone? No answer? Go on. Good. You can know that you're with me now. All right. I'll go over it again if we need to. All right. Now, holding that, we're going
going to go back to 2 Maccabees chapter 12 and verse 44. And we'll read 44 to 40, 45. Yes, sir. 2 Maccabees in the Apocrypha, page 153, chapter 12 and verse 43. And when he had made a gathering, Salah, verse 44, for if he had not hoped that they that were slain should have risen again, it had been superfluous and vain to pray for the dead. And also in that he perceived that there was great favor laid up for those that died godly. Died godly. Uh, read on. It was in holy and good thought, whereupon he made a reconciliation for the dead that they might be delivered from sin. Now, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to pull it all up because I just said I'm only doing a cursory because I did this just on the other day where it is traditional with us in Israel to pray for our forefathers. Why? Because our forefathers actually remember what we read earlier on they told us that the, that the visits uh, the iniquities of the fathers upon the third and fourth generation so we're praying uh, heavenly father hold your hand do not let this iniquity fall or the actions of their iniquities fall on them or on us. Now, why do we do that? Why do we pray for them? I'll explain it down and read one scripture about the baptism for the dead. Is that when uh, the souls of our people come back to be born again, we're praying that the children don't come back under judgment and they're born in a drastic way. <laughs> That's why we do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. So from here, let's go, if you please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 29. I know this is a little bit heavy for some, but for some of you it's not because you you know you've been under certain teachings that have been before, so you you have a um, an, an understanding. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 29, go ahead and read. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 29. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? For what? For the dead. So that also was a practice that they did. But this practice was completely wrong. And they did this out of ignorance, but they did not understand. But then Paul had to straighten them out on it. Read. If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? See? So if you, if you, the Sadducees, if you don't believe in resurrection, so why are you baptizing the living um, for the dead? Therefore, if you're baptizing the living for the dead, then you must believe in the resurrection. See? So that's a cut right there. Uh, all right. The final area that I want to deal with is the Apocrypha promotes the use of magic. <laughs> Let's break that down. Let's go to Tobit chapter 6. Now this is what sparked everything off, off from the other week when, or the few weeks back, when our sister asked the question. So, Tobit chapter 6 and 1. Let's begin reading if we please. In the Apocrypha, page 39. Tobit, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. And as they went on their journey, <clears throat> they came in the evening to the river Titus, and they lodged there. And when the young man went down to wash himself, a fish leaped out of the river and would have devoured him. Then an angel said unto him, Take the fish. And the young man laid hold of the fish and drew it to the land. To whom the angel said, Open the fish, and take the heart, and the liver, and the gall, and put them up safely. Read on. So the young man did as the angel commanded him, and when they had roasted the fish, they did eat it. 
Then they both went on their way till they drew near to Ecbatane. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azarus, to what use is the heart and the liver and the gall of the fish? And he said unto him, Touching the heart and the liver, if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any, we must make a smoke thereof before the man or the woman. And the party shall be no more vexed. No more what? No, no more vexed. vexed. No more vexed. All right. Let's jump up to verse 16. Verse 16. And when thou shalt come into the marriage chamber, thou shalt take ashes of perfume and shall lay upon them. Now underline the word perfume. All right. Continue to read. And shall lay upon them some of the heart and liver of the fish, and shall make a smoke with it. Make a what? A smoke with it. Read. And the devil shall smell it, and flee away, and never come again any more. But pay, when... Pay attention, brothers. When I repeat, we might, we, it should be repeated. Okay. All right. Verse 17 again. Verse 17. And when the devil shall smell it, and flee away, and never come again any more. But when thou shalt come to her, rise up both of you and pray to Yahweh, which, what? And and pray pray to to Yahweh, Yahweh which is merciful, who will have pity on you and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. Read. And thou shalt preserve her, and she shall go with thee. Moreover, I suppose that she shall bear thee children. Now, when Tobias had heard these things, he loved her, and his heart was effectually joined with her. Joined with her. Now, now that we've got the basis of it, go, if you please, to the book of Exodus chapter 30 and 37. Exodus chapter 30 and 37. Thirty and thirty-seven. Exodus chapter thirty and verse thirty-seven. Read. And as for the perfume, which hold it, hold it. Let's read that again. Exodus chapter thirty and verse thirty-seven. And as for the perfume, as for what? And well, as, as for, for the perfume. perfume. Now you see, it's speaking about perfume, right? Yes. Now remember, that back in Tobit chapter 6 and 16 through 17, he made a perfume, right? Yes, sir. Now, let's read on in verse 37 and see what it says. Read. Which thou shalt make. Which thou shalt make. Read. Ye shall not make to yourselves. Ye shall not make to yourselves. Read. To the composition. To what? To, to the, the composition thereof. Read. It shall be unto thee. It shall be unto you. Holy for the Most High. Holy for the Most High. Right. So the perfume becomes a sweet incense that can be used or burned in smoke or to create an odor. Now, if we go to Exodus 29 and 13, let's examine it further. Exodus chapter 29 and verse 13. And thou shalt take all the fat that covers the inwards. Now, you notice how it's spoken about taking the fat that covers the inward part. Same way it's speaking about taking the inward part of the fish. Right. So when it's, oh, see, he's making black man and bullshit <laughs> But yet, we just read it in the book of Exodus. And you never said nothing about that. So read it again. Exodus chapter 29, verse 13. And thou shalt take all the fat that covers the inwards, read, and the call that is above the liver. Above what? Above, Above the, the liver. liver. Read. And the two kidneys. And what? And, and the, the two, two kidneys. kidneys. 
three, and the fat that is upon them, and burn them upon the altar. See that? Now, what is the difference, pray tell? What is the difference? Because now we're using the fish, you're going to start to lose your mind over that? Come on. It's showing you that the same practices existed before. Because you must remember, Israel, why? As Israel, we have to be careful what we say to one another. Because, you know, we get hurt so easily. Because the soil of our spirit is fertile. And that's why we have to be careful how we say things about one another. Because when we say it, it hurts us. Now some of us are built that you can pretend or act like it didn't hurt you. It did hurt you. But you just pretend you grew because we're spiritual people, and spiritual people have a knack of harnessing things. That's why when they teach us their ungodly ways, we pick it up so good and do it even better than them. Right. Proverb tells us that. Call to mind, I will find it right next to it. says, uh, yes, I'm going to Will we spend time better? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> Uh, let me let me find it. Bear with me. I just have I just have to when it's playing on my head like that, I've got to find it. I can just bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Uh, yeah, go to Proverbs chapter twelve and twenty-six. Big brother, face of Jesus. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 26. The righteous is more excellent. What did he just say? The, the righteous, righteous is more excellent. excellent. See, that's what we are. Read. Then his name. Read. But the way of the wicked. But the way of the wicked. Read. Seduces them. Seduces us. That's what, that's what it does. And that's why we pick up their way so good and we end up, they look at us like, what? <laughs> You've taken what I've done to a whole nother level. That's why they know when they make a sin, they know that we're entrapping ourselves. Let's go back to Exodus. What did we last read? 29, 30. Let's read one more time, if you please, just to make sure that resonates in your mind. The book of Exodus, chapter 29 and verse 13. And thou shalt take all the fat that covereth the inward, and the car that is above the, the liver, the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, read, and burn them upon the altar, read. Verse 14. All right, let's drop that for time for sake. Uh, run now, if you please, to Toby chapter 8 and 1. Toby chapter 8 and verse 1. In the Apocrypha, page 40, Toby chapter 8 and verse 1. And when they had supped, they brought Tobias in unto her. And as he went, he remembered the words that Raphael and took the ashes of the perfume. Of the what? Of, of the, the perfume. perfume. Read. And put the heart and the liver to the fish thereupon, and made a smoke therewith. The witch smell, the witch smell, when the evil spirit had smelled. He fled into the utmost parts of Egypt, and the angel bound him. There it is. Done. So you, you see how we utilize these things, our people. Let's go from there to Philippians chapter 4 and 18. The book of Philippians chapter 4 and 18. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 18. But I am all and abound. I am full, having received the the, uh, the Ephrotitis, the Ephrotus, the things that which were sent from you, 
an odor of a sweet smell. Of a what? Of a sweet smell. Go on. A sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing unto your hope. Unto your hope. All right. From there, let's go to Amos chapter 5 and 21. Please make notes of these. Amos chapter 5 and 21. Let's read the book of Amos chapter 5 and verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days, yes. and I will not smell your solemn assembly. You see that? So you're seeing how it's all related to who we are. All right? The person turns around and says, well, God can't smell. What's he, what's he doing with perfume? Well, let's read it again in case some of you thought opposite stuff in here. Let's read. The book of Amos, chapter 5 and verse 21. I hate, I despise your solemn feast days, and I will not smell you your... Do what? I will I not smell, smell in your solemn assemblies. Right. So from here, let's go back to um, Tobit chapter 6 and verse 8. In the Apocrypha, Tobit, chapter 6 and verse 8, page 39. As for the God, it is good to anoint a man that to have to do what? To anoint to a man Read. that have whiteness in his eyes, and he shall be healed. He shall be what? He, he shall, shall be healed. healed. Alright. Let's go to chapter 11 and verse 7. Tobit, chapter 11 and verse 7, page 41. Then said Raphael, I know, Tobias, that thy father will open his eyes. Therefore, anoint thou his eyes with the God, and be prickled, so I can, and be pricked. Therewith he shall rub. He shall what? He, he shall, shall rub. Read. And the whiteness shall fall away, and he shall see thee. There it is. Um, I think I like from there. Let's go to John chapter 9 and 1. Book of John 9 and 1. Is it John? <clears throat> Let's read. St. John chapter 9 and verse 1. And as Yahweh passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Read. And his disciples asked him, saying, Stop. John down to seven now. Verse seven. And he said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Salam, which is by interpretation sent. Three. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came see. And came see. So, what we see here, that the practices of following a direction or a command is something that even Yahweh Shai himself practiced um, and caused a miracle or healing to come. Now, for some of you who don't know this story, let me just step back a little bit because it might be unfair for me not to let you <coughs> in on the inside school. So let's go back and read verse 6. Um, in fact, in fact um, read verse 2 first, and then I'll give excerpts and you just read that together. Right. St. John, chapter 9, verse 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, read. that he was born blind? Read. Yahweh Shai answered, Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of Yahweh should be made manifest in him. All right, so from there, jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. So here he is now, and again, this is what people don't talk about. So you can talk about everything else, but you don't talk about this. He spat on the ground. Now remember, spitting was an act that could get you in big trouble in those days. Um, because you weren't supposed to spit in a certain way. 
and I'll explain that. Um, in other words, you should never allow someone's spit to go on you. So, what does Yahweh Shai do? He spits on the ground, he mixes up some clay, and finish reading the verse if you please. Right. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he puts the, the spit, which is in the clay, the dirt, on his eyes. Now, the truth is, under, the, under that law, it would have made the, both he and the man unclean. Right. But watch what happens. Read. And said unto him, Go, wash the pool of Salam. So this man allowed him to do this, because he was blind, of course, and then tells him to go wash, uh, to get clay off, and to spittle off your eyes. And watch what happens. He now can see. Sure. Now, this is why he was a complete contradiction to the law. And it bothers them. Because how could he do this? And this is why, you see, you, you, we have to read the story and have some eye understanding of what, what was the goings on of that time. What was the tradition? All right? Okay. Any questions before I go any further? Before I go further? Any questions from anyone? Anyone online have any questions? Spirit in, um, in Tobit, that was a physical person. I mean, the spirit, the, the spirit that was on him with, um, with um, the, the lady um, Tobias with married to right. that was a physical. No, it wasn't. A, it wasn't. A, a, it was a. It was a spirit. It wasn't a physical person. It, it was. It was ethereal. It was um, a presence, um, a spirit from the left hand side. That's why you read that after the spirit fleed out, it, it went to Egypt. And then the scripture says that he then bound that spirit in Egypt. Um, not necessarily to tie it up, but, but bound it that you stay in that city, you can't leave. See? So, any other questions? But does that answer, uh, that's more of an expanded version from your question, but it does it answer everything. Because in the Apocrypha, oftentimes, there are some things there that we don't quite understand. But you'll see, it's all legitimate. Now, now here's another question to bear in mind. Let's, let's, let's take it a step further. Uh, make a note of this, if you please. When you, if you buy an Apocrypha, you must buy the King James Apocrypha, not the animated version. Do not buy that. If you buy the unannounced version, you'll find the wrong one. You're going to run into trouble because there's going to be a whole, there's going to be some additions in there that man put in. But when you buy the King James, you're buying something that, that's undefined. Bear this in mind, make a note of this as well. And you should study this and keep this in your head. The Apocrypha was in the Septuagint. That goes all the way back to 285 BC. This is before Yahushua was born. So if it was before Yahushua was born, that means then that when he was on the earth, he was quoting from that. And what you're reading now, he was reading then. You got that? Uh, say amen or say yes. Amen. Or, 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 or say something to me. When you, when you nod your head up, and I'm not looking at you, I don't know. All right. The other thing is as well, the Apocrypha has always been a part of many, many um, 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 Bible verses or transcriptions. First of all, it was in the, 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 the Whitecliffe Bible of 1382. The Whitecliffe Bible of 1382. It was in the Coverdale Bible of 1535. It was in the Great Bible of 1539. It was in the Geneva Bible of 1560. It was in the Bishop's Bible of 1568. It was in the King James Bible of 1611. 
It was in the Zurich Bible, the Swiss Bible, of 1530. It was in the French uh, uh, Levitan Bible of 1535. And it was in the German Lutheran Bible of 1545. And it was in the Spanish Bible of 1569. See that? Right. Now, is there any questions that anyone has on that? Yeah, you'll get you'll get it up online and we've got where to go back and we study this. Alright? But you can see how many Bibles it's been in, right? So it lets you know that when people talk about what it's not not in my King James, look at it in the King James study. That's true. Look at that a minute. Question, go ahead. Would you speak as to why they took it out? Yes, because um as I've said in times past, that it, te it tells about your ancestors. It tells about who, who they are. It also talks about how, um, how in fact, yeah, that seems like a, a good segue. Um, oh. All right, number one, we'll make a note of this. Columbus used it for part of his navigation to the new world. He used it. And, uh, and we see this when you go to 2 Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Let's go there. Let's read it. We'll just read a few passages there. 2 Ezra chapter 13 and verse 14. In the Apocrypha, page 30, 2 Ezra chapter 13 and verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Ose, Read. the king, whom Salamansa, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters. And so now, the reason why that's important for you to keep that in mind is because when the scripture says we will be scattered to the four corners of the earth, when, when Salamansa, the king, took our people over into the deepest part, of 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 um, um, uh, what's that land called? No. Um, when they took them, it'll come to me in a moment. But when when he took them to the far that which is like going into where China is and going into all of the Arabia and all, oh, and he we, we were scattered to the to the widest part. We were so far away from our land that the ten tribes said to themselves, we will never get back there. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, rather than stay with these people, uh -huh. we'll, we will go to a land where no man has existed before, and there we will study the laws and upkeep them as we've never done before. Now, when you read this now, read on, sir. Verse 41. And by the way, the date of this is what date, ladies and gentlemen? 70 AD. No. 700. Oh, yeah. 70. No. 70. No. Don't guess. And the reason why I, I, I'm, I'm being, being uh, uh, adamant here is because, and see, now you're going to make me have to confess to you all the next year. <laughs> no, I thought it was coming. No. no. Because here it is. These are dates that are important. Like 70 AD is very important because if you're speaking to a Christian apologist who's going to come at you now, and they will come. Believe me, they will come, and they're going to come, well, you know, and they're going to try and come slick. But if you have your facts, then, then you can found them. The date of this is 722 B.C. Now, when you have that, keep it in mind. But don't, it's not that hard to, and I know sometimes, I shouldn't say it's not that hard, some people have a challenge that way, but, but try and keep that in mind, because that day is very important, it deals with the 10 tribes. Read on, sir. Verse 41, but they took this counsel among themselves. Read. That they would leave the multitude of the heathen. 
the heathen meaning the other nations that they were scattered among because they were they were all, all over where where China and and the Mongols and uh, Assyria they were all over the place. Three and go forth into a further country. So so instead of going back because we were so far forward, let's find another part of the world where we can go where no man has exists. Read. Where never mankind dwelt. Read. That they might now, now, now remember, where never mankind dwelt meant that this is the this is the, what they call the new world. You study that when you deal with Columbus and Sir Francis Drake and King Philip of Spain. And in case most of you that do not understand that King Philip of Spain was one of the that Spain was one of the superpowers before England. England only got into it because England cheated. What did it do? It sponsored the pirates to capture the gold bullion uh, armadas and take the money and bring it back to England. Right. That's right. Because remember, the first, the first of our people to go into ships as cargo was not Judah. It wasn't Judah. It was the ten tribes. Because they took them from where they were and brought them back to, and that's why those who say, well, when we go to our ancestors, because my, my mother and father used to tell me these, these things, that the, because I'm of uh, West Indian lineage, those people, when they, when they were taken, as the, the Africans, so-called, they called us Africans back then, were taken <coughs> to Jamaica and Trinidad and Barbados and all those places. When they took them there, they said they saw people there. Mm -hmm. And they called, and the, 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 the people who took them, they called them <coughs> Indians. Mm -hmm. The word Indian is a Latin word. simply means slave. Oh. And so when they went there, they saw the people there. But unbeknown to our people that these people were taken and dropped off there by Columbus and others because they were trying to um, they were trying to create uh, locations where or trade routes is what I'm looking for. And so when they when they dropped them off, some of them there because they couldn't because as they found the island, they dumped some of the people and then took on board more supplies and they went on their way. So, that, so the island started a new group of people. So then 50 years, 60 years later, when they made the voyage back to these, but now it's a whole colony of people there. When they got there, ladies and gentlemen, and, and then they were bringing the slaves from the west of the Ivory Coast and bringing them to the islands now, um, that's when they saw them and they said that these people lived there first, but they didn't know that these were still their own people. You see how confusing that was? Right, right. They got to the island, they saw people, they saw them, they're, they're, oh, they're Indians, but they're your people. That's how they confused us. And so, and they created a prejudice between the people that were on the island and the people that are now going to the island. Knowing that, that they're the same blood, same father. Are you seeing, are you seeing how nefarious this man is to do this type of thing? What a demon. And so that's why my parents told me that they were called the Arawak Indians. That's what they had. Right? It was a name that was used, but it's not a real name. It's not a real name. They just called them that. The same way as the Incas. And uh, who's the other? The Mayan? And who else? And uh, the Aztecs. So then when we read this now, go ahead, sir, finish it if you please. Yes, sir. Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 42, page 31. That they might there keep their statue. Keep what? Keep their yes, statue. statue read. Which they never kept in their own land. See, they didn't keep it in their own land. Read. And they entered into the Euphrates. By the narrow passage of the river. Read. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. Till they were what? Till, till they, they were passed, passed over. over. Read. And though that many, 
that country there was a great way to go. Read. Namely, of a year and a half. So it took them a year and a half to travel from the outer lands where they were to get across uh, to the other side of the world, which today they call the Americas. And it began in what we call South America. These are black lands, yes. black countries. Yes. So please don't, please try to look at yourself and, and build your, yourself up and understand that you owned land. The, the, the challenge is it was taken from you. Right. Uh, have you finished that, sir? No, sir. Go on. Stop at 45. Yeah. Well, it is 45. Oh, it is? Okay. Uh, okay. <coughs> read them just a little bit more. Yes, sir. And the same region is called Aseret. Read on. Then dwelt they there until the latter time. So they dwelt there in Aseret. And by the way, Aseret is what was also known in the history books as, as Turtle Island. Uh, they called the Americas the Turtle Island because they didn't know it was an island. They didn't know it was a continent. Read on. And, and now, when they shall begin to come, the highest shall stay the, the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. Therefore, sawest thou the multitude with peace. With peace. So, so Columbus found this out and used this as a means to get across to the new world. He got there by reading our book, which is called the Apocrypha. Mm. And, and this well documented and well known, they made a film about it. I think the film was called 1492. The second point, um, in the Wizard of Solomon, Quickly just go there, 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. <coughs> I can't remember the question that was asked to me. <laughs> I was asking um, if you could, well, I was asking if you could speak about how, why the Apocrypha was removed. Okay, all right, so I'm, I'm, I'm on track. Okay. Yes, yes, right. So, so I'm giving you the reasons why. So if you got the first one, yes. here's the second. Um, uh, item B, then, let's call it. All right, so uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. Let's begin at verse 12. Now watch this. If you haven't read it, watch how this opens your eyes. Up. Go ahead. Page 66, Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 14, verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. The beginning of what? Of spiritual, spiritual fornication. fornication. And the invention of them that salaki. And the invention of them that corrupt. Slow down this a little bit. Go on. Yes, sir. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. Read. For neither were they from the beginning. Neither shall they be forever. For by the vain glory of men they enter into the world. And therefore shall they come shortly to an end. So, a particular group of people, the, the scripture is telling us they're going to come to an end. Follow this closely because you'll miss it. Read. For the father afflicted with untimely mourning. When he had made an image of his child, soon taken away, now honored him as a god, which was then a dead man, and delivered to those that were under him <coughs> ceremonies and sacrifices. This was Pope Alexander the Sixth. You need to make a note of that in your book, otherwise you will forget it. You will forget it. Pope Alexander the Sixth. This is dealing with Caesar Borgia, or Cesare Borgia, as it's pronounced in the Italian. Sole Italia, ti veniamo domani sera. All right, let's read. Verse 16. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Read. And graven images were worshipped 
by the commandments of kings, Read. whom men could not honor in presence, because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage, of his visage, his face, the painting, read from far, read, and made an express image of a king whom they honored, read to the end that by his, but by this their forwardness they might flatter him that was absent, as if he were present, because he was dead. Read on. Also, in singular diligence of the ultimatus. Of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorance of more superstition. For he, preadventure, willing to please one authority, forced all his skill to make the, the, the resemblance of the best fashion. Watch it now, read. And so the multitude, allured by the grace of the work, took him now for a God. Took him for what? For a God, read, which a little before was but honored as a man. Read. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. Deceive what? Deceive, deceive the world. world. Read. For men, serving either calamity or tyranny, did, did ascribe unto the stones and stocks the incommunicable name. Good. Read. Moreover, this was not enough for them, that they erred in the knowledge of Yahweh. Read. But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace. For whilst they slew their children in sacrifices, or used secret ceremonies, or made revelings of strange rites. That's why you'll find they have the owl clubs and they have all been talking about just last night. Come. These are these are the people where all that mess comes from. Read. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Because they they brought they 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 epitomized the acts of of, of of adultery that created more and more divorce. That divorce now is commonplace. Read. But either one slew another traitorously or grieve them by adultery, but select, so that there reign in all men, without exception, blood, manslaughter, theft, and dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, perjury, disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good terms, defiling of souls, changing of kind. Disorder in marriages, see, read. adultery, and shameless. All from them, all from them, read. And shameless uncleanness. For the worshiping of idols, not to be named, is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. Read. For either they are mad when they be married, or prophesy lies, or live unjustly, or else lightly forswear themselves. Read. For in, the, in so much as their trust is in idols which have no life, though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be hurt. Read. How be it? For both causes shall be justly punished, both because they thought not well of Yahweh, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly swore in deceit, despising holiness. Read. For if it is not the power of them by whom they swear, but it is the just vengeance of sinners that punisheth always the offense of the ungodly. Read. But thou, O Yahweh, art gracious and true, long suffering, and in mercy ordering all things. Read. For if we sin, we are thine. So he's letting us know that they, they, even their actions were ordered by the Most High God. That's why they can't help doing what they're doing. Come. Read. Knowing thy power, but we will not sin, knowing that we are counted thine. Read. For to know thee is perfect righteousness. Yea, to know thy power is the root of immortality. For neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us, nor an image sported with divers colors and painters fruitless labor, 
See that? Read on. The sight whereof entice fool to just after after him. That's why when they see the picture of Jesus, they go, oh, look at Jesus. Oh, that's wonderful. Because it's inciting what? Read what it says to lucky. The sight thereof enticeth fools to just after it. To, to what? Lust, to lust after it. Read. And so they desire the form of a dead image. That have no bread. That has no bread. Go from there to First Maccabees chapter three forty-eight. Change in the image. This is point number C. So we've done A, B, now we're at C. Read page one eighteen, First Maccabees chapter three and verse forty-eight. Read and they opened the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. See, they paint the likeness of their self. In other words, they painted out uh, you and painted themselves in. Yep. That's what the book says. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and 16. Wisdom of Solomon, page 66, chapter 14 and verse 16. Read. Thus, in process of time, in a godly custom, Grown strong was kept as a law, and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. See? Same book, chapter 15 and 14. Chapter, uh, no, 15 and 4. So what? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15 and verse 4. Neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us, nor an image spotted with divers color, the painter's fruitless labor. See that? So, what you're seeing there, ladies and gentlemen, is the people, they didn't want you to find all this out. <laughs> Imagine, this is, this is like a smoking gun. And here's the last scripture that we'll read today, um, which is from um, 2nd Ezra's chapter 6 and 54. Because they don't want you to know this part. Read. Page 21 in the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, and verse 51. Unto Enoch thou gavest one part, which was dried up the third day, that he should dwell in the 54. same form. Salaki, verse 54. And after thee, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the prophets also, whom thou hast chosen. All his, Salaki, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. For whose sake? For our, our sake. sake. So they don't want you to know that the world was made for your sake. That's no. Read. As for the other people, which also come of Adam. And they know this too. The Pope knows this. Read. Thou hast said. That they are nothing. Are you going to think, do you think the Pope's going to let you know this? <laughs> that he and all the other people there are nothing? Really? Breathe. But be like unto spittle. Be like unto what? But be like be unto, unto spittle. Breathe. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falls from a vessel. From a vessel. Um, that's it. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, because I had read but the history when he says so when they say uh, you know, Columbus saw two people like Carib, you know, saying they're black with the hair. And but what what I'm asking is the one that they call uh, uh, the Alwa, they was they was our people also, right? They were black. They try to make them play like they were Asian, they came from no. the streets. Yes, sir. It, these people that they tried to make out that they were other people, they were us. Us. And remember, these 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 Caribs, these Arawak, all of these people, they in terms of the uh, because they were trying to say that they weren't dark people. Right. No, right. these people look like you and I in this room. Right. That's right. The only difference was that because they had grown their hair so long, it had become straight. Right. Now some some of our people will say, well, we don't have straight hair. No. 
nonsense. The phenotypes in terms of how we look and our hair, it runs in our bloodline. That's why you could have six children. You'll find that one of the children, the, the hair may be straight, one may be curly, one may be bigger curly. That's right. It, it, you, you're not all the same. Yes, that's right. In that regard. So, so, um, so to turn around and only classify it down to hair, it's, it's ignorant. Mm -hmm. See? Because it's in our bloodline. That's why when you read the story of Absalom and you see how how his hair grew so long that it, it blew up as he was riding in the chariot and got caught in, in the tree. That's right. The pickles of the branches. So so our people uh, saw one another, didn't know one another, and fought against one another. Mm -hmm. But eventually what happened was the Arawak Indians and the so-called Africans, they joined together and became one. Mm -hmm. You see? That's how all that uh, came about. And then they went ahead and conquered the, the, you know, conquered a certain group of them and drove some of them off, off the island. So our people, our history is far. It's just that it's hidden from us. Mm -hmm. and most of our people are ignorant to the truth. That's the point. Any other questions? Had a lot of meat there today. Oh, a lot. Yeah. Any questions online? No one has any questions here. I'm open to questions. Anyone has questions? Anyone? Any question? Question, my brother. Question. Feel free. Uh, I got some questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. My uh, my oldest son here uh, in the school. He uh, he made uh, he was the top two. I want to know who the other girl is, a little white girl. And my boy is five years old. He's been reading since about Is this a question or a statement? I want to, I want to make a statement. <laughs> if it's okay. Go ahead. Because what it was leading to is that I went to a parent meeting yes, uh, yesterday, and they said, they were, do you want your son to go participate in uh, Thanksgiving, the things and like that? And I said, no. And she said, well, you know, it's so sad to see them sitting in a room by themselves. So the question in which I answer, what I, what I want to answer is, it doesn't matter, just leave him in that room by himself, what she was asking me. And she said, well, this is not Christmas, but it's just celebration to it. I said, I don't want it. Did the, I tell her? The, the only way where I can answer is to say, your, your children will be what you teach them at home. If you don't teach them at home, they will not expound what they need to say when they're out in the world. And what the, what the schools will do, they will either see that you are uh, de rejecting them from something that is celebrated, and um, they're losing out. Because I heard that. Your children are losing out on, on the facilities. And I said, good. But you see, you're not like me. I'm very direct when it comes to stuff like that. No, I'm and, very and, and I don't, and I don't, and I, I do not, I do not palliate that. I don't allow them any recourse with that because they will try to make out that I'm the bad guy and, and so on. And I made it very, very clear to the teacher. First of all, no um, white man with a, with a white beard is going to get credit for anything that I do for my children. That's right. They're not going to get it. And see, what many of us have, have done, we per, we've, we've uh, perpetuated it by making it seem all right that Father Christmas is the thing. And some of us have gone even worse than we take them to the mall, where they're going to sit on some pedophile's lap to, to, uh, yeah. to, to, um, to ask for a promised present. And, and, and here, is the, here is the thing, the original um, um, so-called, um, the original um, so-called St. Nicholas was a black man. Did you know that? Yeah, you told me the first yeah. thing. He, he, was a black man. Man. he was a black man. Yeah. And, and he gave gifts, part of what, what he did. The Santa Claus nonsense 
That's that's a that, that's a German pedophile. So 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 just to just to really kind of so I don't really want to make it a, 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 a teaching thing. But those things, Thanksgiving's coming up. Um, what's the other thing that they had coming? Where there was those ghost things? Oh uh, yeah, Halloween, Halloween right. all of those things. You've got to be strong in who you are as a parent. Um, you can't be wishy-washy with it, and you can't be trying to, well, you know, it can't be that. Nope. Well, that's me. But uh, you do do what you have to do. But according to this book, we know that those things are of the devil. They're witchcraft. And, and, and no matter how many times we go to the school and have this conversation, you've got to let them know who you are and and look, when they were going to have certain things, I said, well, my, my, my children won't be going to school that day. I let them know. But, right. but you have to have it here. It's, it has to be something that you're standing on it. That there, there's no debate, there's no argument, there's no meeting, there's no nothing. But that's how forthright I am on it. And, and, and uh, I, I don't get... And here's the thing. They couldn't, they couldn't fall my children on their spelling, their reading, their this, their, their that, and the other. And if they can't do that, if, if that's not the problem, I don't want to know about the rest. Because I'm not sending them there to get caught up into any witchcraft. I'm sending them there to, to be taught. And for the most part, my children were more taught than what they were when they went into school. So, so that, that, that's my 10 cents on it. And I'm sorry if I, if I appear to be kind of impatient with it. It's because we've got to know this by now. Well, it's just, it's just, it was just yesterday, and I wanted to ask you just re reaffirm because when you're talking about it, well, they can, you know, you know, some people say, well, they already know what the truth is, they can go. And I just said, she said, your kid's going to be so sad. And I guess I just want to, a little confirmation here. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. I had to pick up. Yes, so, so good. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I have another question. All right. Before so, so you can your question. And also, I want to say something. My mother is a teacher of a Sabbath day. I'm good friends with my mother. So I grew up in it. Mm -hmm. I was that kid that had to be led off in the country. Okay. Long day work. That's what you Party. Mean. It was okay. It was okay because my mom taught me the reason I had to go to that other room by myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to participate in what the world had to offer. And that's what we as parents and we can raise and rear our children. Mm -hmm. Let them know that this isn't just mommy and daddy's responsibility. This is about who we are. Right. That's right. And that way they can take ownership. Well, y'all just tell me, because I, I, I can go back and say, look, when you have things like that, just call me. I will pick them up. They didn't want to sit in the box. I said, well, if they do, then okay. Yeah. I, as I said, with my children, I've always been extremely active in their education from the beginning. Uh, I'm, I'm one of those fathers that is not, um, oh, no, you go into it. No, I'm in. Uh, there, is, there is no meeting that I have that goes above my children. My children come first. Always, and and because I uh, brought them up that way, they never felt that. And I and I was a pastor. They never felt that church had more of a thing over them than their lives. Their lives to me was more important. And you have to have that with your children, because that's why we have so many messed up um, people today, and they hate the church because of some of the things that they experienced were coming up. Yes, yeah. Go ahead. That's another reason why we had anything so special with the children. We brought the gifts. They missed out on nothing. We brought the gifts. We did special things for the children. On the holy days, help them remember the holy days and not those days of the world where they were thinking in school. When my, my one of the boys recently came home and said, Mom, I got a chance to tell them I'm going to the streets. Mm -hmm. And I'm flying on the came home telling me what he told the kids in school. Although, and even though they were making fun of him because he was going to make school and not wear his 
You see, it, it, this, when we have our holy day, you begin to see just how you are raising your children. Because if you've still got your children doing things the way that everybody else is doing things, when you know the holy day is on and your children should be participating with you, then you are. Simple as that. Um, I, I concur. When, with the holy day, all right, we're going to. We would go out and buy a new dress or buy a new uh, um, outfit for, for our, our, our my son. One of those kind of African-looking type um, things with all the gold and blah, blah. We, we did all of that. Because we want them to feel absolutely special that when they put it on, they were excited, they were dressed up, they were ready to go. But if we don't put the importance on our feast day and all the celebration, then, and, and they will look at us. So remember, children, don't always learn from what you say. They learn from what you do. That's why if a, if a young boy sees their father slap his, his mother, when he grows up, he thinks that's what I've got to do. That's why you, that certain things your children mustn't see and certain things that they must see. And let them see the positive. Karen? Karen. And so, and so when it comes to those things, I, I think um, you've got to go by your own conviction as well. Because I'm, I'm sold at it. I'm convicted. Your children will be sold at it. That's right. If you're kind of like this, your children will be like this. Thank you very much for saying all here. But everything, that's why I said I'm going to take the video. All right. Back to your question now, ma'am. Pastor, is there a difference between soul and spirit? Is it one and the same? Um, they're, they're pretty much one and the, one and the same. Um, Except for you'll find sometimes that the spirit is, is more dealing with the, 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 the life that's in you that makes you exist. Um, but when we deal with the soul, we're dealing primarily with, with, with your mind. Because remember, your, your, your mind is what, is what will live on. This, this, is, this suit here, this sack, it's only temporary. You'll never come back to it. <laughs> So I thought the spirit lived on as well. Well, the, well, the spirit is is connected to your 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 mind mm -hmm. because um, when you when you come back, the scripture tells us uh, for the Ecclesiastes chapter one and verse nine. If it wasn't connected, then this would you would could you couldn't do this. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Right. And there is no new thing under the sun. Right, so it's dealing with, with, with the spirit because, continue to read. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see this, Salaki, see, this is new. And have been already of old time, right. which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things. So the, the no remembrance is to block your 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 mind, your spirit from remembering the things that you did before. There's no remembrance that has to be blocked off, because you'll come into. That's why. And and notice your spirit is is, is so attuned that take that spirit now. And you go to a different country. You walk in a country. You go. Oh, why does this feel familiar? The reason why is that you don't have no remembrance, but your spirit feels like it's been here before. The world calls it déjà vu, and and so with with that, it, it, it's a feeling of uh, experiencing something before. That's what you go to. You can't have no remembrance of it because the scripture doesn't we'll read that again. With no remembrance. <clears throat> there is no remembrance of former things. So you have no remembrance of former things. Read. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come. And you won't have no remembrance of things to come. But your spirit is like 
There's something about it. And you know what? I've been to places where, well, I, 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 with my wife, and I said, I'm black, such and such and such is around the corner. And we go around the corner, and there it is. I said, uh, you've been here before? No. But I could see it for some reason. Don't know why. But that's how it is. Your spirit is familiar with the place of being. And your spirit has been all over the place. Mm -hmm. Don't think it's just been here. It's been all over the place. So the difference between the soul and spirit, they, they, are, they are very similar <coughs> except for the fact that, um, to make it more clear, the soul really deals primarily with the mind and, and the spirit. It's kind of connected. Um, Romans 8 and 16. Go ahead. It's the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. So it so your spirit knows who you are. That's why when we see someone uh, who is of the Son of God, we're, and, and we're breaking this this word down to it, and they get it, our spirit is bearing witness to, to one another. Even though he may not know who he is right now in former times. But something about this truth is real to me now. I don't know why it keeps pulling me. It's real to me now. You see? Go ahead. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 16. That's a good one. Be of the same mind. Be of what? Be of, of the, the same, same mind. mind. Dealing with the soul. Go on. One towards another. One towards another. Mind not high things, but consent, but but consent to men of low state. Be not wise in your own conceit. Any other questions from anyone online or present? Again, utilize these moments. Any question at all doesn't have to be on topic. How about, Pastor, yes, uh, forgiveness? Like, uh, you know, I'm being coming into the, the truth. You know, I'm saying But I know I, I do feel have a lot of forgiveness that I have to do in my life. Maybe like what is like just in the Christian world. Right. So, so there's that you have things inside of you that you need to forgive them. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so what's stopping you then? What's stopping me? Yeah. Because I mean, uh, I mean, it's really hard forgiveness that I'm not going to get back. You, you make some so hard. hard. What's stopping me? It's not gonna be. It's not gonna come back. They're not gonna forgive me. All right. They're gonna apologize to me. Right. Well, the scripture says. Um, I think it's in James. It, it says. It says once you have once you have forgiven, then it doesn't matter uh, how they respond to you because it's gonna be like coals of fire on their head. Yes. You see. So your job is is to do your bit. If they choose not to do anything from that point on, you can't do anything about it. If I come to you and, and I apologize for anything that I've said in, in times past, but you still choose to hold me accountable to, to that thing, it's no longer my fault. That's your fault. You, you're going to have to deal with it. Let me see if I can find that scripture. Uh, anyone who finds it, just do this. Follow it out. Is it James? Calls the fire upon you from the head up to the Right. Anybody in there? Anyone? 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 Proverbs twenty-five and twenty-two. Oh, what did you say? Proverbs twenty-five and twenty-two. Um. Is that the one? Let's let's go there, but I don't. I don't it doesn't sound like it. Let's just see. Twenty-five, twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yeah. Go ahead and read. The book of Proverbs, chapter twenty-five, and verse twenty-two. For thou shalt keep coals of fire upon his head, and the Most High shall reward thee. What was that? Next. Romans twelve and twenty-two. Romans. Romans, what do you say, ma'am? 12 and 20. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The, 
book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse 20. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. But overcome evil with good. Well, what was the one that, that um, what was it, 12 or 25? Or 22. 22, yeah. Yeah, that, that must be it then. Um, read 21. Go back and read 21 first, and then read 22. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 21. If thine enemy be That's hungry, yeah. give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water and drink. So that's the precept to, to, um, to Romans chapter 12 and um, 22. Right. It's very good, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Yeah, so so long as you do your, your part, it's left into the hands of the other, other people. You don't concern yourself with that. Uh, otherwise, you'll constantly find yourself being challenged in life. And um, we need to be taught. Yes, ma'am. Um, Uh, does it ex right. If it extends beyond Israel, let's say, for instance, um, if it's outside of Israel, um, the truth is, I won't worry about it. <laughs> um, but if it's but if it's in Israel, that's your concern, because you are your brother's keeper, and you and the reason why we have to be careful because sometimes we don't know who our brother is. I don't know who you are. It could be that you're one of the prophets. But if I treat you with disrespect and all of those things, it could be that in the kingdom, I find out, what? That was Zachariah? Mm. You see, so, but, but we have to be, we have to be careful how we treat one another. Scriptures warn us of that. Warn us of how we treat our sisters. We could be dealing with, with um, um, Deborah or, 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 or What's Abraham's son? Sarah. Sarah. You see? People that the scripture holds in high esteem. So we have to be mindful of our actions towards one another. But the other nations, it doesn't matter so much. Because see, the other nations are never going to um, they're never going to be perfect. Because do you know that in the kingdom age um, there's, there's going to be sin? How many of you knew that in the kingdom it's going to be sin? Not, not us, terrible. not Israel. Oh, so but, but not within Israel. Right, right. It's the other nations. Because remember, the devil's still going to be around. His angels are still going to be around. Well, what are they going to be on his mind? There will be there, there will be corporal punishments and all of those type of things. Why? Because the law is going to be given to them. Once the law has been put in us, um, Romans chapter 12, uh, 13. Um, yeah, Romans chapter thirteen. Uh, begin at uh, verse. Um, uh, read from. Read from verse eighteen. Romans chapter thirteen and verse eight. Owe no man anything, but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Read on. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Who is your neighbor? Israel. Israel. That's right. See? And then in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse, verse 8. <coughs> 
Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Most High, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Wait, wait on. Not according to the covenant. That, jump down to 11 for context. Please. Verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Most High, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to them. So uh, for I will be merciful. So, so I, forgive me, um, verse 10. Just read verse 10. So I, Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Most High. I will put my laws into their mind, Where? into yeah, their mind, mind. and write them in their hearts, Where? and I write them in their, their hearts, hearts. and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Right. So the laws and everything is going to be in us, so we're not going to, it'll be impossible for us to sin. Um, but the other nations will, they will sin. They will, they will, they will do, do things that they will end up having to be, you know, taken out and, and, so, and so on. Uh, the proof of that is found in um, Isaiah chapter, um, Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 20. There shall be no more of uh, this an infant of days, nor an old man that have not filled his days. So, so, so they shall be what? Read that again slowly. There shall be no more this an infant of days. Meaning an infant of Israel who is born and lives a few days then dies. That's what that means. You get that. Read on. Nor an old man. Nor what? Nor an old man. In other words, uh, we're not going to have men who do not fulfill their years. Go on. That have not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner, being an hundred years old, shall be accursed. See, there's the word sinner. That's in the kingdom. That means they won't live. That means that they'll get close to 100 years and they'll die. Right. Sinners. Sinners won't live beyond that. And that's why it says, um, read the last clause again, but the one who falls. Hold on. Back up. Read the latter clause of that sentence. Yes, sir. <clears throat> For the child that shall die a 100 years old, but the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. So that, that's eleven minutes. Did, did you have a question? Oh, I thought I saw your hand. It's it's my back. I'm back. Okay. All right. So does that make sense? Can can can. All right. So you you had something else you were saying? Uh, the Jews that are in Israel right now. Yeah. That's their mother tongue. Correct. And um, they're going to go into bondage real soon. Yeah, because everything's going to be. Um, how do we. What scripture do we use to prove that? Jacob is the end, Esau is, Esau is the end, Jacob is the beginning. Mm. Where's that found? No. It's in Name it and read it. Page 20, 2 Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning that follows. There it is. So that's pretty much it. Now I've got to make a couple of announcements. Um, to all 
uh, our guests who are coming into the city for next week for the Feast of Tabernacles. We look forward to seeing you there. Um, we wish you a safe journey as you travel in. And we pray that Yahweh guides you through the airways and, we, and we will certainly meet you at the hotel, greet you, and uh, have a wonderful time of fellowship. Um, and uh, any other questions that you have, again, okay, feel free to ask those questions online, and I will certainly uh, deal with them over the feast. But in the meantime, on the behalf of, of us here in Houston, I say to you, and the officer, we say shalom, and speak to you soon.